As you saw in the last video, SPSS can save you a great deal of time simply by counting cases, working out percentages, and calculating averages and measures of spread. Think how long it would have taken you to work out a mean when you have over 1,000 cases. And what about a standard deviation? As you progress to more advanced forms of analysis, SPSS can save you even more time and also perform calculations that you wouldn't be able to do, or at least that you wouldn't want to do yourself. In this video, we're going to be conducting cross-tabulations with two categorical variables. Cross-tabulation, or cross-tabs as it's sometimes called, is a very simple procedure that can help you show the number or proportion of cases in subgroups of your respondents. You'll see what that means in a minute. So suppose we were interested in the relationship between our respondent's ethnicity and their employment status. We might want to know, for example, whether some ethnic groups have higher rates of unemployment than others. We could use cross-tabulation to provide us with information about this. Cross-tabulating data really just involves creating a table, or to put it another way, displaying our two variables in tabular form. It's something you might have done before you learned anything about statistics or data analysis and isn't really that difficult or complicated. It is, however, a very useful technique for exploring your data. Let's first create a very simple table that cross-tabulates the data for employment with the data for the ethnicity of our respondents. Again, we're going to go to the Analyze menu. Scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and this time, select Tabs. A dialog box will appear, but it will be slightly different from the ones we've looked at when exploring frequencies and descriptive statistics. The column on the left still contains a list of all your variables, but the col column on the right is broken up into three smaller boxes. The only ones we need to know about for the moment are the two labelled row and column. You need to put one variable in each box and whether you put a particular one in row or column will only affect the orientation of the table. We'll come back to this again later. For the moment, find the variable ethnicity in the left hand column and press the arrow button next to the row box. This variable will then be moved over into the row box. Next, find employment status and select that, then press the arrow next to the column box to transfer employment status into that box, and then press OK, and that will be transferred also. There are various other options and default settings that we'll look at later, but for the moment, just press OK. As usual, SPSS displays the results of the analysis in the output window. The first table, called Case Processing Summary, tells us that one case is missing from the analysis because it did not include information on either ethnicity or employment status or even both of these. It shows that this represents a non-response rate of only 0.1%, so shouldn't make much difference to our analysis. The next table provides the results of our cross-tabulation. The bottom row of the table shows that in total 627 of our respondents are in employment, 54 are unemployed, and 442 are economically inactive, which means they are either in education, too unwell to work, or are in unpaid domestic work. Looking at the last column, we can also see that 1,018 of our respondents are white, and 105 are members of other ethnic groups. This tells us that our respondents are fairly representative of the population of the UK, at least in terms of ethnicity, as nationally, minority ethnic groups make up just under 10% of the population. It would have taken an enormous amount of time to generate this table by hand, so again, SPSS has saved us a great deal of time by creating this for us. It also won't have made any of the mistakes that we could have made putting it together ourselves. But it's not really that easy to see whether there's some kind of ethnic imbalance in employment or unemployment by looking at this table. We could probably work this out with a calculator by converting the frequencies into percentages, but SPS can do this for us more quickly, 
and also gives us several options for presenting data in different ways in a cross-tabulation. We're going to look at a few of these in the next video.